Laudator Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ, and a most warm welcome to all of you joining us today on the Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. At the end of Mass, the symbols of World Youth Day will pass from the youth of Panama to the youth of Portugal. I'd like to welcome all of you joining us for this live broadcast from St. Peter's Basilica. On behalf of Vatican Media, a warm welcome to all of you joining us through the various Vatican Media channels, through the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook live feed, the Vatican News English YouTube channel, the Vatican News live event app, or the Radio Vaticana app. To all of you joining through television, thank you so much for joining and welcome. To you tuning in through Catholic TV, EWTN, Salt and Light TV at Madarshan TV, and Catholic Faith Network. And then to those of you tuning in through radio, especially those of you joining through Luminous Radio, and to other radio listeners from other local radio stations picking up this broadcast as well as to all of you joining us through digital platforms. My name is Sister Bernadette and it's a pleasure for me to be able to provide you with the texts and translations for this Mass today. The Mass will be following the Feast of Christ the King. World Day, International World Youth Day, was held in Panama at the, in January of 2019. And the next one is planned to take place in Lisbon, in Portugal, in 2023. The hashtag being used for this particular celebration today, Take Up the Cross. The symbols that will be passed on are the World Youth Day Cross, which has been on pilgrimage throughout the world, carried by young people from various places since the early 1980s. And a copy of the uh, Roman icon Maria Salus Popoli Romani. Our Holy Father now has finished sensing the altar and the beautiful image of our Lady Star of the New Evangelization. And we prepare ourselves now to take, to participate in Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. La pace sia con voi. All'inizio di questa celebrazione eucaristica chiediamo la conversione del cuore. We ask for conversion of heart. Conciliazione di comunione con Dio e con i fratelli. From the source of communion with God and our brothers and sisters. Pietà di noi, Signore. Signore, la tua misericordia. Perdonaci la tua 
Dio Onnipotente, abbia misericordia di noi, perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna. Amen.
preghiamo. And we pray. Dio onnipotente ed eterno, Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Amen. We prepare ourselves now to hear the voice of the Lord proclaimed through the readings of today, our first reading coming from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Lectura de la profecía de Ezequiel Esto dice el Señor Dios Yo mismo buscaré mi rebaño This y lo cuidaré in Spanish, Como cuida un pastor de su grey dispersa Thus says the Lord God así, I myself will look after and tend my sheep as a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so I will tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. Buscaré la oveja perdida. Recogeré a la descarriada. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal. Pero a la que esté, la que está fuerte y robusta, But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, la con justicia. shepherding them rightly. En cuanto a vosotros, mi rebaño, Esto dice el Señor As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. The Lord refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Me tu prepari una mensa sotto gli occhi. 
You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. second reading today from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Leitura da primeira epístola do apóstolo São Paulo aos Coríntios. Irmãos, Cristo ressuscitou dos mortos como primícias dos que morreram. Uma vez que a morte This reading being um proclaimed homem, in Portuguese. Um homem, Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised Porque, from the dead, the first modo, fruits of those who have morreram, fallen asleep. Assim For Cristo, since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead also came through man. For just as in Adam Cristo, all die, so too in Christ shall assim, all be brought to life. For each one in proper order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all.
gospel antiphon proclaiming Jesus King, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Il Signore sia con voi. Dal Vangelo secondo Matteo. Gloria a te, Signore. The book of the Gospels. Being incensed, we prepare ourselves to hear the word of the Lord proclaimed from the Gospel according to Matthew. In quel tempo Gesù disse ai Suoi discepoli, Quando il Figlio dell'uomo verrà nella Sua gloria e tutti gli angeli con Lui, Jesus said to His disciples, When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit upon His glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before Him. And He will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave Me food. I was thirsty, and you gave Me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed Me. Naked, and you clothed Me. Ill, and you cared for Me. In prison, and you visited Me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill, or in prison and visit you? And then, the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. And then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison? And not minister to your needs. He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. prepare ourselves now for our Holy Father's homily, for the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe, the last Sunday in Ordinary Time. What we've just heard is the last page of Matthew's Gospel that comes immediately before the account of Christ's Passion. Before pouring out His love for us on the cross, Jesus shares His final wishes. He tells us that the good we do to one of our least brothers and sisters, whether hungry or thirsty, a stranger in need, 
sick or in prison, we do for him. In this way, the Lord gives us his gift list for the eternal wedding feast that he wants to share with us in heaven. These gifts are the works of mercy that make our life eternal. Each one of us can ask, do I put these works into practice? Do I do anything for someone in need? Or do I do good only for my loved ones and my friends? Do I help someone who cannot give anything back to me? Am I the friend of a poor person? And and starting from there, there are many other questions we can ask ourselves. There I am, Jesus says to you. I'm waiting for you there, where you least expect and perhaps may not even want to look there in the poor. I am there, where the prevailing mentality according to which life is good if it's good for me least expects me to be. I am there. Jesus also says these words to you, young people, as you strive to realize your dreams in life. I am there. Jesus spoke these words centuries ago to a young soldier. He was 18 years old and not yet baptized. And one day, he saw a poor man who was begging people for help but wasn't receiving anything because everybody was walking by. That young man, seeing that others were not moved to compassion, understood that the poor person was there for him. Yet he had nothing on, only his uniform. And so he cut his cloak in two and gave half to the poor person and was met with mocking laughter from some of the bystanders. The following night he had a dream. He saw Jesus wearing the half of the cloak he had wrapped around the poor person. And he heard Jesus say, Martin, you covered me with this cloak. St. Martin was that man. He had that dream because without knowing it, he had acted like the righteous in today's gospel. Dear young people, dear brothers and sisters, let us not give up on great dreams. Let us not settle only for what is necessary or what is owed. The Lord does not want us to narrow our horizons or to remain parked on the roadside of life. He wants us to race boldly and joyfully toward lofty goals. We are not created to dream about vacations or the weekend, but to make God's dreams come true in this world. God made us capable of dreaming so we can embrace the beauty of life. The works of mercy are the most beautiful works in life. The works of life are specifically at the center of our great dreams. If you are dreaming about real glory, not the glory of the passing world, but the glory of God, this is the path to follow. Read the Gospel passage today, reflect on it, because the works of mercy give glory to God more than anything else. This is worth knowing well. The works of mercy give glory to God more than anything else, and in the end will be judged on the works of mercy. Yet, how do we begin to make great dreams come true? By great choices. Today's Gospel speaks to us about this as well. In fact, at the Last Judgment, the Lord will judge us on the choices we have made. He seems almost not to judge, but merely to separate the sheep, the sheep from the goats, whereas 
being good or evil depends on us. He only draws out the consequences of our choices. He brings them to light and respects them. Life, we come to see, is a time for making strong, decisive, eternal choices. Trivial choices lead to a trivial life, great choices to a life of greatness. Indeed, we become what we choose, for better or for worse. If we choose to steal, we become thieves. If we choose to think of ourselves, we become self-centered. If we choose to hate, we become angry. If we choose to spend hours on our cell phone, we become addicted. But if we choose God, we grow daily in his love and we choose to love others and we will find true happiness. It's like this, because the beauty of our choices depends on love. The beauty of our choices depends on love. Let's not forget this. Jesus knows that if we are self-absorbed and indifferent, we remain paralyzed. But if we give others, if we give ourselves to others, we become free. The Lord of life wants us to be filled with life, and he tells us the secret of life. We come to possess life only by giving it away. This is a rule of life. Life is we possess life now and eternally only by giving it away. It's true, there are obstacles that can make our choices difficult. Fear, insecurity, many unanswered questions, many whys. Love, however, demands that we move beyond these and not keep wondering why life is the way it is and expecting answers to fall down from heaven. The answer's already arrived. It's the, the gaze of the Father who loves us and who gave us his Son. No, love pushes us to go beyond the why, instead to ask, for whom? For whom do I live? To passing from asking, why am I alive? To, for whom am I living? From why is this happening to me? To whom can I help? For whom? Not just for myself. Life is already full of choices we make for ourselves. What to study, what friends to have, what home to buy, what hobbies or interests to pursue. We can waste years thinking about ourselves without ever actually starting to love. Alessandro Manzoni offered a good piece of advice. We ought, to we ought to aim rather at doing well than being well, and thus we should become, in the end, to be even better. That's a quote from I Promessi Sposi, uh, The Betrothed, written by Alessandro Manzoni. Not only doubts and questions can undermine great and generous choices, but many other obstacles as well. There's the fever to possess, consume, consumerism, can overwhelm our hearts with superfluous things. An obsession with pleasure may seem the only way to escape problems, yet it simply postpones problems. A fixation on our own rights can lead us to neglect our responsibilities to others. And then there's the great delusion about love which is more than powerful emotions, but primarily a gift, a choice, a sacrifice. The art of choosing well, especially today, means not seeking approval, not plunging into a consumerist mentality that discourages originality and not giving in to the cult of appearances, choosing life means fighting against the mentality of the throwaway culture to use and throw away and the desire to have everything now in order to direct our lives towards the goal of heaven, toward God's dreams. Choosing life means to live. And we're here to live 
not to... I didn't get that word. I want to live. Uh, a young person said this. Each day in our hearts we face many choices. I would like to give you one last piece of advice to help train you to choose well. If we look within ourselves, we can see two different questions arising. One, what do I feel like doing? This question often proves misleading, since it suggests that what really counts is thinking about ourselves and indulging in our wishes and impulses. But the question that the Holy Spirit plants in our hearts is a very different one, not what do you feel like doing, but what is best for you? This is the choice we have to make daily. What do I feel like doing or what is best for me? This interior discernment can result either in frivolous choices or in decisions that shape our lives. It depends on us. Let's look at Jesus and ask him for the courage to choose what is best for us, to enable us to follow him in the way of love and to discover joy. To live. To live and not just get by is what our Holy Father was saying. A young person was saying he wanted to live and not just get by. For those of you who may have just joined us, we are coming to you live from St. Peter's Basilica, the altar of the chair, where our Holy Father is presiding over Holy Mass for the solemnity of Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, at the end of which the passing of the World Youth Day symbols will take place. Youth from both Panama, where the last Youth Day took place in 2019, as well as youth from Portugal, where the next International World Youth Day will take place, are present here. those present here in the Basilica, taking a few moments of meditation after hearing our Lord's, our Holy Father's homily. Cardinal Kevin Farrell here, the prefect of the Dicastery for Family, Laity, and Life, under which World Youth Day is placed. Here we see the World Youth Day cross, which has been on pilgrimage around the world taken from one country to the other. Since the early 1980s, we now profess our faith.
Fratelli e figli carissimi, con lo sguardo fisso. Dear brothers and sisters, with our gaze fixed on Jesus, our soul, King and Savior, let us confidently lift up our prayer to God, our good and provident Father. Concede la unidad a Grant unity to Christians. Conserva la salud. Preserve Pope Francis's health. Haz que el trabajo de los misioneros dé fruto. Grant that the work of missionaries bear abundant fruit. Derrama tu espíritu. Pour out your spirit on the ministers of your church. Santifica a los Sanctify men and women religious. Passing now from Spanish to Portuguese. Rid the world of hate and injustice. Grant that young people might grow in wisdom. Sustain and comfort the elderly. Grant prosperity to our friends. Admit the deceased into the company of the saints. Hear, O oh Father, our poor prayer and recognize in it the voice of Jesus, who offers himself as a victim of love for our salvation. Amen. We now move into the liturgy of the Eucharist, passing from allowing the presence of our Lord to nourish us in his word to allowing the presence of the Lord to nourish us in his body and blood. Continue the celebration, the feast of Christ the King. A recent feast added by Pope Pius XI in 1925 as a feast to be celebrated at the end of the liturgical year. As we know at that time, the totalitarian regime's beginning. By instituting this feast, he wished that nations would see that the church has the right to freedom and immunity from the state. That leaders and nations would see that they are bound to respect Christ, the King a king who reigns from the cross, and that the faithful would gain strength and courage from the celebration of the feast, as we are reminded that Christ must reign in our hearts, minds, wills, and bodies. Our Holy Father now 
sensing the image of the cross, crucifix. Through these images, we are helped to recall that we are about to partake in the renewal of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. The eternal sacrifice through which we now participate. following in a missal the Eucharistic prayer that will be said for today's liturgy is Eucharistic prayer three. Through this incensing we remind ourselves that we too offer this sacrifice to the Father on the altar of our hearts. Pregate fratelli perché il mio vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio Padre Onipotente. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and peace. Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo spirito. In alto i nostri cuori. Sono rivolti al Signore. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. È cosa buona e giusta. E veramente cosa buona e giusta, il nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza, rendere grazie sempre in ogni luogo a te, Signore Padre Santo, Dio onnipotente e eterno. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as the eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might all accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so, with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, with all the hosts and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we, as without end, we acclaim.
Padre veramente santo, a te la lode da ogni creatura. Per mezzo di Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio e nostro Signore, nella potenza dello Spirito Santo, fai vivere e santifichi l'universo e continui a radunare intorno a te un popolo che da un confine all'altro della terra offre al tuo nome il sacrificio perfetto. Ora ti preghiamo umilmente, manda il tuo Spirito a santificare i doni che ti offriamo, perché diventino il corpo e il sangue di Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio e nostro Signore, che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Nella notte in cui fu tradito, Egli prese il pane, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo spezzò, lo diede ai Suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e mangiatene tutti, questo è il mio corpo, offerto in sacrificio per voi». We adore you, our Lord, and our God, King of my heart and of the universe. Dopo la cena, allo stesso modo prese il calice. Ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione. Lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, prendete e bevetene tutti. Questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. My Lord and my God, with your blood you set me free. Mistero della fede il tuo figlio morto per la nostra salvezza, gloriosamente risorto e asceso al cielo, nella testa della sua venuta, ti offriamo, Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nell'offerta della tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione. E a noi che ci nutriamo del corpo e sangue del tuo figlio, dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo, perché diventiamo in Cristo un solo corpo e un solo spirito. Egli fe- faccia di noi un sacrificio perenne a te gradito, perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso insieme con i tuoi eletti, con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, con San Giuseppe e suo Sposo, con i tuoi santi apostoli, i gloriosi martiri, e tutti i santi, nostri intercessori, presso di te. Per questo sacrificio di riconciliazione, dona Padre pace e salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua Chiesa pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo e il nostro Papa Francesco, il Collegio Episcopale, tutto il clero e il popolo che tu hai ridento. Ascolta la preghiera di questa famiglia che hai convocato alla tua presenza nel giorno in cui il Cristo ha vinto la morte e ci ha resi partecipi della sua vita immortale. E congiungi a te, Padre misericordioso, tutti i tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli difunti e tutti i giusti che, in pace con te, hanno lasciato questo mondo. 
Concedi anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme, a godere per sempre della Tua gloria, in Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale Tu, o oh Dio, doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a Te, Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. We will now be invited to pray the Lord's Prayer. Illuminati dallo Spirito di Gesù, illuminati dalla sapienza del Vangelo, possiamo dire. Dio Signore da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento, nella testa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace. Non guardare ai nostri peccati, ma alla fede della tua Chiesa, e dona le unità e pace, secondo la tua volontà, tu che vivi rei nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Pray the Lamb of God on you stay. Invitati alla cena del Signore, 
Ecco l'agnello di Dio che toglie i peccati del mondo. O Signore, non sono degno di partecipare alla tua messa, ma di soltanto una parola e io sarò salvato. Our Holy Father now receiving communion. Cross, or the World Youth Day Cross, also known as the Jubilee or Holy Year Cross, along with this image of Maria Salus Popoli Romano, or protecti protectress of the Roman people, to pass from the youth of Panama to the youth of Portugal. The cross was placed in St. Peter's Basilica. It's almost four meters high. It was placed near the main altar during the holy year of the redemption. And at the end of that year, he entrusted it to the youth of the world. And it was taken to San Lorenzo Youth Center, not too far from St. Peter's Basilica. The youth took the Holy Father's request very seriously that they take care of this cross. The first pilgrimage that the cross went on was to Munich in Germany. during 1984, the young people took the cross to Lourdes. And in 1985, a group of German youth took the cross to Prague in answer to the Holy Father's, Pope John Paul II's request. It was the International Youth Year proclaimed by the United Nations. And the young people who had met in St. Peter's Square on Palm Sunday that year, which was youth, World Youth Day that year. Took that cross on a way of the cross throughout Europe, Italy, France, Luxembourg, Ireland, Scotland, Malta, and Germany. And in December of 85 was when John Paul II announced an annual World Youth Day. Ever since then, the cross, since the first International World Youth Day in Rome in 1986, has gone from one place to the other throughout the world. Argentina in 87, Spain in 89, Jestahova in 91, Denver in 93, 95 to Manila, 97 to Paris, Rome in 2000, 2002 in Toronto, 2005 in Cologne, 
2008 in Sydney, 2011 Madrid, 2013 Brazil, 2016 Krakow in Poland, and 2019 Panama. This is definitely a youth movement that inspired our Holy Father to institute World Youth Day. But in between these World Days, it has visited many, many other countries throughout the world. So prayers for World Youth Day in Lisbon to Our Lady of the Visitation. Our Lady of the Visitation, you who arose and went with haste towards the mountain to meet Elizabeth, lead us also to meet all those who await us to deliver them the living gospel, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, and we can add today, our King. We will go in a hurry, with no distraction or delay, only with readiness and joy. We will go peacefully, because those who take Christ take peace, and well-doing is the best well-being. Our Lady of the Visitation, with your inspiration, this World Youth Day will be the mutual celebration of the Christ we take, as you once did. Make it a time of testimony and sharing, friendship, giving thanks, each of us looking for the others who are waiting for us. With you, we will continue on this path, and now we pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom. And now we will have the handing over of the cross, the official handing over, from a group of young people from Panama, where the last World Youth Day was held, to a group of youth in Portugal. The end of this Eucharistic celebration, I cordially greet all of you present here and all those who join us through the media. A special greeting goes to you young people from Panama and from Portugal, represented by the two delegations that will shortly take part in the significant ceremony of the passage of the cross and the icon of Our Lady Salus Popoli Romani, the symbols of the World Youth Days. This is an important step in the pilgrimage that will lead us to Lisbon in 2023. And as we prepare for the next international celebration of World Youth Day, I would also like to renew its celebration in the local churches. It's been 35 years since the establishment of World Youth Day, and after listening to various opinions and consulting the dicastery for the laity, the family, and life, which is responsible for youth ministry, I have decided 
decided, beginning next year, to transfer the diocesan celebration of World Youth Day from Palm Sunday to Christ the King Sunday. The center of the celebration remains the mystery of Christ the Redeemer of man, as St. John Paul II always emphasized who was the initiator and patron of World Youth Day. Dear, jo dear young people, cry out with your life that Christ lives, that Christ reigns, that Christ is the Lord. If you keep silent, I assure you the stones will cry out. now gathering around the World Youth Day symbols right now. Bringing them to the middle. As we hear a song being, a hymn being sung about the church being born from Christ crucified. Portugal now come and take them in hand. This ceremony taking place now for over 30 years. from one side of the altar to the other, signifying the passage from Panama to Portugal. Amen.
as is customary after these celebrations in St. Peter's, we now turn to Our Lady with the Salve Regina. Youth Day symbols now in the hands of the youth of Portugal, having been handed over on the Feast of Solemnity of Jesus Christ, our Lord, King of the Universe, a celebration taking place during coronavirus. Generally, this ceremony took place in a packed Palm Sunday Square with huge delegations from the country who had the last World Youth Day in the country receiving the symbols. Only five present from Panama and Portugal this year. But all of you are asked to take place in today's passing on of the symbols. You're invited to send photos or other memories if you have ever been a part of these World Youth Day symbols. You're invited to share them on social media using the hashtag Take Up the Cross. This now ends the live broadcast of this liturgy presided over by Pope Francis on the occasion of the Solemnity of Christ, the King of the Universe, and the passing on of the World Day Cross and image of Our Lady. We'll be back again live in about an hour for the Pope's Angelus message at 12 noon Rome time and the recitation of that prayer. Full coverage of today's liturgy and other Vatican World News, as always, can be found on the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter accounts. Warm thanks to all who have made this broadcast possible and to all of you for joining us. Laudator Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. <laughs>